Hello, my name is Jae Bom Jung. I am the lead kernel developer working for Ufram Research in the field of graphs and network. During my presentation today, I will be discussing about the current status of graphs and network, what's new, and also what you are doing for the future version of Ufram language. As of today, we have about 178 graph theory symbols in Ulfram language. We believe we cover the most essential area in graph theory. This chart shows how the number of symbols in graph theory increased over time. For example, we first added 97 symbols in version 8, which is the first version we introduced graphs in system, not as the package. After that, we keep filling what's left in the field, also working on improving existing functionality and moving vertically, like working with other area of Lufram language or doing some side project. Let's start to check what's new in visualization aspect of graph and network. The first is labeling. To label vertices, we can use vertex labels options and Ulfram language automatically place vertex labels near vertices. For example, here you can see vertex labels positions top left of each vertices. But the top right side of labels looks fine, but other part like here, you see the vertices got inside of graph drawing that lower visibility. So we will develop new automatic behavior that works best for each specified, specified embedding or layout. So for example, here you see the graph layout. We set the circular embedding. And if you check this same command in latest Mathematica, so like here, now you see all the labels placed outside of graph drawing, not intersecting any edges or vertices. So this is not just for circular embedding. Here I will show you the gallery of how this new automatic behavior looks at different embedding. So for example, like balloon embedding, bipartite embedding, circular embedding and gravity. So you will see all different kind of embedding with the new behavior of labels. If you don't want to this new behavior, you can still recover the old behavior or you can specify specific placement using like placed. So next is constraint layout or coordinate. When you draw graphic, I mean graphs, you can manually specify vertex coordinate using vertex coordinate option. Like this example, giving all coordinates for each vertex, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and it draw based on the given coordinate. This is how it worked before, but in new version like 12.1, you don't need to specify all coordinate for each vertices. Like if you can only specify the coordinate of vertices you want. Like this example, you see I just specify coordinate for vertex 1, 3, 4, 5 without 2. And if you learn it, you see all the vertices placed by your specification. But vertex 2 automatically completed based on other vertex coordinates. And you don't need to give in full coordinate when you're specifying it. For example, here 3 and 4. I specify only Y coordinate and let X coordinate compute automatically by saying automatic. For, for vertex 5, I just specify same thing, Y coordinate. Or you can just specify X coordinate. And if you evaluate it, then you see, for, for especially for vertex 3, you see it is on the 1 y coordinate but x coordinate automatically computed ba based on surrounding coordinate and this constraint scheme is not just for 2d 
you can use for any dimension. For example, like in 3D, this is automatic behavior without specifying vertex coordinate. And here's I just specify 1, 3, 5 and you see everything works fine and following this specification and other vertices computed automatically. Like I said, this is not just for 2 and 3, I mean this is, you can extend to any dimensions, but as you know, I, you, we can draw the graphs more than like a 4. So in this example, I just specify 4 dimensional coordinate for these 3. And instead of drawing, because we cannot, just using function graph embedding to extract the coordinate. So here you see this, we got the four dimensional coordinate and then all the requirement is satisfied. Let's check the new behavior of highlight graph. Highlight graph is the function to help you highlight elements of graph you want. For example, here, you see the case when you highlight a single group of element. So vertex 1, 2, and edge connecting 1 and 2, highlighted with default highlight style you see here. And next is the case when we want to highlight multiple groups of vertices and edges. So for example, here, two groups are automatically styled with two different color. It's like kind of red and yellow. And this is nice feature to distinguish different groups. But it doesn't really follow the default highlight style you see for single case, or nor highlight style specified by user. So we go further in the new version so that it color differently like here and also maintain specified style. And this is the new behavior we implemented in the new version. Now you can see not just color also it follow the default highlight style. And next slide will show you the gallery of highlight graph in case of multi groups. So all the style like dashed, dotted, thick is nicely maintained with different color. That depends on the group you specified. In this slide, we'll check the change in the layered graph plot. Layered graph plot is the function that generates a layered plot of given graphs. This is the typical example of how layered graph plot works. So the second argument saying we want to place two vertex two on top. So if you evaluate this input, you see the plot that place two on top. But what if you want to place several vertices on top, not just like two? The new argument we added is so you can list root vertices so that multiple vertices place on top or like specified position like left, right, or bottom. So for example, here I said two and seven on top and labeled automatically and if you I evaluate it now you see instead of just one like previous example you see two and seven on top of flat and feature I introduced so far are already in the latest version of Mathematica so you can use it and now I want to show you something we are working on. So this is not in the, the version available, but it you will see in the near future of Mathematica. First, layered graph plot 3D. You already see layered graph plot that generate layered plot in 2D space like this one. And layered graph plot 3D 
as you can guess by name, is the function that generates layered plot in 3D space. Here are some basic examples. So this is the case the applying carry tree graph of 9 to layered graph plus 3D. So as you can see here, vertices on each layer is nicely positioned and you see gray layers inserted to each level so that you can easily verify vertices on each layers. So in order to do this, like other plotting function, you can style layers with different color or any directive you want. So here's the, the example that I just set up face grid style to pastel. So it follow pastel color. And instead of just gray layer, you see the nice different color. So you can easily distinguish layers by color. Other option will be available is like change type of layers and colors vertices by layer etc so here's some example like this one you see instead of the the grade it just you know have bounding kind of box and here's you see the the vertices are colored differently and this is mix of those two effect Another function we are working on is graph value plot. This is the function generate a plot of graph in which the vertices and the edges are styled according to the values. For example here, I try to plot a graph based on degree centrality and at default, as you can see the output, the size of vertices changed based on the degree centrality. So you can specify all vertices like saying vertex list or you can specify like each vertices or edges with certain values. And you can also specify which style you want to change based on given value, not just size, you can change colors or thickness of edges. So here's some examples of graph plot like this one changing size and color based on the given value and this one changing the edge thickness and this one is changing edge colors so we hope this function help you to easily style graphs based on certain parameter like any value you provide other project we are working on is visualization of large graphs like a million of point. Plotting large graphs are not like an easy problem. So we are trying several different ways to attack this problem. For example, like first sampling and reductions. This is the method to reduce size of graph to plot. So for example, we can just randomly sample the point or you can reduce the graph with certain property so that it reduced to reasonable size but still having the important graphical features we don't want to lose. Second, we already have force directed layout scheme which is pretty fast and but we can even go further by adding like a multi-threading in force directed layout or Another way is it's like a, we are using like a multi-level scheme inside of force directed layout and we plan to kind of expose that multi-level to use for visualization. And there's many other like a visualization technique out there for large graph. So we also just working on those. Before we check the what's new in visualization and now let's check what is new in computation aspect in Wolfram language. So find spanning tree is the function that return the spanning tree of a given graph 
and the new version we extend that input to not just grab to like a point or the string or even geodesic point so for example here we just put some random two-dimensional point and if you learn the finest spinning tree on this point you see it's kind of it using the the point as the coordinate of the graph and then finding like smallest spanning tree out of this point it's kind of similar to find shortest tour you if you plug in the point in find shortest tour you get the, like a shortest tour the minimizing the the tour distance of given point this is same exactly same you got the spanning tree that minimize the Euclidean distance distance between point. And here so you see the, the given point and then the spanning tree. So it's not just on two dimensional, you can also applying the three dimensional point and then you got the spanning tree on the three dimensional space. This was working on for the and, and this space. Like I said, it's not just point and pull string. And this finding spanning tree, if you apply string, it will compute spanning tree based on edit distance. So also you can apply, uh, plug in the geo, the, the point. Okay, this is also like future, the direction we are heading. Like a visualization, we also dealing with the large graph in computation aspect for example sometimes your graphic graph is too large you cannot even loading into mathematica in memory so that's why we that come out of core graphs so instead of storing all the graph in the memory we storing the graph in the hard drive or external hard drive and then we just loading portion of graph when it needed that's the concept of, concept of out of graph and also the, the using the GPU as when you're doing computations. So currently there are like a GPU comes with some library, even for graph computations. So we can using that, access it and using it. Also we can even extend those library so we can get the benefit of GPU computation in Mathematica. So last thing I'm gonna talk about is bridge. What it means is like uh, we have many great graph and network functions in Ulpem language. And those functionalities not just useful for area of graph, it, it can also help other area. So first step will be for doing that is converting something to graph. So here is for example like uh, for image we have function called morphological graph that convert image to graph. For example, like this image, you see nicely structured graph out of this image. And then you can compute many more things using this graph and get some idea of your original image. And other function is like uh, in geometry, we have function called mesh connected connectivity graph new in version 12.21 or 12 which convert given mesh to graph so this input second input form you can specify 0 or 0, 0,2 0, 0,1 0 and 1 is the the like a uh, 0 means the point 1 is line so that's the line in the mesh graph so it giving the relationship between each cells so using this function, you can check some of the topological aspect of your mesh, like a finding hole and check if mesh is connected or I, what I mean is closed or not. Something like that and many other useful features using the graph functionality. And we have function molecule graph that giving graph structure of given molecule. And at last, it's like an expression graph that 
giving the, the expression structure, any mathematical expression, and giving this nice tree graph. So this will be the last slide of today, and thanks for I mean, watching this presentation, and I really hope you got some, you know, you got some useful idea of what's going on lately in Ulfheim language in the field of graph and network. Thanks for attending, and if you have further, want to get further information, you can check the, the graph and network documentation and the tutorial something like this, in the web or even in Mathematica. So thanks. Uh, yeah, Boom, this is uh, Bruce Coletti <clears throat> again. Uh, I do have a question. Yep. Uh, are there any plans in some future version to uh, uh, build uh, the uh, group of a graph? Uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the group of automorphisms associated with a given graph. So, so like a the kind like, like the isomorphism we have, the the um, of automorphism, right? Well, I, I'm not so into the the isomorphism part. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I really want to be able to deal with the with the group uh, that emerged from a given directed graph. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if maybe you and uh, Jose Mark Garcia, the developer for the group theory package, have ever had discussions along that line oh the group theory package yeah we have in the system and yeah we not right now but as i know we yeah plan to extend those functionality also so yeah yeah okay so it's, it's on the list of things to do okay good mm -hmm. thank you no, not on your picture but yeah you can also send like a you know to the as you know like technical support for asking so <laughs> They can be on the list more quickly. So yeah, but we definitely have some yeah discussion okay, about thank it. You. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Ibrahim. Let me uh, ask this question. This might be a little off the reservation. Um, are there any plans to uh, extend the functionality of the function, and I forget what its name is, uh, that comes up with a a solution for the uh, uh, traveling salesperson problem. You mean the the find find shortest tour? Uh, that 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 sounds like it would be the the right function. I am just drawing. Oh, find the postman. Yeah, we have find postman tour function. Yes. Uh, well, well, all right. So I'm not so much interested in the solving the the postman problem mm -hmm. as I am solving mm -hmm. the, the traveling salesperson problem. So you know, I do know mm -hmm. that when the uh, number of cities is suitably small mm -hmm. that you can solve it uh, in a straightforward manner. Mm -hmm. But when the number of cities gets too large, you have to, to trigger uh, heuristic methods. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm just wondering if there are any improvements uh, to finding heuristic solutions uh, that, you, that you are now working on or will be working on. I mean, right now, even the fine postman tour or find shortest tour for large graph, it automatically triggering heuristic method, heuristic method. Right now, so okay. Yeah. These are uh, these heuristic methods that are triggered in, in the postman salesperson problem. Mm -hmm. Are they proprietary to Wolfram, or are they? Uh, can they be found in the literature? And, and if so, then you know what I'm going to ask. Okay, mm -hmm. Is there a, a reference that you could give to all of us? Uh, yeah, that can be considered because right now I don't think we have kind of option to fine tuning for holistic method. It's kind of automatically kick up. Okay. Unless you set up like a performance goals to quality, then it will try to find the near problem. If it's like automatic or speed, then it will kick up the hardest state method. Okay. Uh, you, okay, I, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, well, thank you. Yeah. But if you want to do other tune, then it, that's another, yeah, probably suggestions. But right now we don't have it. I have everybody. So like I said, 
you have meetup, so you can join that if you have more questions. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.